The Mets line up Len Dykstra to lead off in center field and as was the case last night Wally Backman bat second Keith Hernandez hitting in the three spot Darryl Strawberry having a good series with nine hits bats fourth and the big man last night Kevin McReynolds hitting fifth switch hitting Greg Jeffries the rookie third baseman in the sixth spot Gary Carter hitting seventh Kevin Elster again gets the start tonight at short and the pitcher Ron Darling who started game three and was not involved in the decision Oral Hershiser goes to the mound for the Dodgers making his fourth appearance in the series once more the inside pitch on Oral from Mike Schmidt Oral Hershiser's best asset for me is his hard curveball I've seen Oral throw it as many as four or five times in a row to certain hitters me being one of them. He also throws a very hard sinking fastball, which he uses to get ahead of hitters. We call it a heavy ball. He throws a very heavy ball. He breaks a lot of bats. Oral has a great feel for the game. He loves to pitch. He's great at moving around on the mound. He holds runners on well, and he's a good hitter. And he'll face Dykstra, Backman, and Hernandez in the first inning. Back of him, Gibson, Shelby, and Marshall in the outfield. Infield, Hamilton, Griffin, Sachs, and Hatcher. And it's been that way for the last six games. Stubbs started game one at first base. Sosha behind the plate. And here is Len Dykstra, who hit 270 during the regular season. Did not start against Hershiser, didn't walk in that first game to really get him out of the ballgame. And the crowd very much in the game at the beginning and the first pitch is a breaking ball high ball one one and oh. Kind of an interesting first pitch selection the curve ball. Well you sit on the bench and you watch Dykstra the last couple of games he has been smashing the high fastball. And he hits this one in the air to left center field hobbling over his Gibson and you can see the limp already one out. Boy, and when you see that it goes back to the question we talked about last night is uh, Maybe 100% of somebody else better than 60% of Gibson. I guess we're just going to have to wait and see. The thing you can't wait, Jim, is if the players who are out there with him see him on one leg, it's got to be an inspiration to all of them. Yeah, but how about defensively? And well, uh, that's you know, true. That's I mean, tangibly, problem. I agree with you. There's no question about it. We saw him hitting before the ball game. The leg did not appear to bother him hitting as it did last night. Wally Backman with Hamilton shortened up at third. To guard against a prospective bunt. The count one ball and no strikes. Backman, who was hitting, and there's Hamilton in the eighth spot earlier in the series, moved up last night and strokes this one foul, and the count one and one. On deck is Keith Hernandez. Hershiser pitching in game one when this series began a week ago yesterday. Then he would have pitched in game four, but because of the rainout, Tommy Lasorda moved him up to game three. And because of that, he is able to pitch game seven. The 1 1 pitch is hit foul. If Lasorda had not opted after the rainout on Friday night in New York to juggle his rotation, then Hershiser either couldn't have pitched tonight or would have to do it on two days' rest. And this is the first time in his career he's ever pitched two consecutive starts with only three days rest. If you can call two appearances in the bullpen, one <laughs> right. in the game, three days rest. <laughs> That's right. He doesn't throw between <laughs> starts. He's done it twice. One, two to Backman. Foul away again. Of course, I think what he has said is, hey, I, I mean, and if you go back to August when he started this scoreless scheme that ran up to 59 during the regular season, then it went to 67 and a third. After the first ball game, he's been in such a great mental state that he does it with minimal physical effort. Very compact windup, stays within himself, and in, that's the groove he was talking about. One, two to Backman is inside, two and two. And that runs counter when you come in on Backman to the way the Dodgers are playing him, shading him well around toward left. Well, it goes back to that the game on Saturday. Backman had the big hit that got Oral out of there. He tried to pitch him in. He pulled the ball. John Shelby's out in left center and it fell into right field. Right center. 2 2 is looped over the head of Griffin out into left field for a base hit. First hit of the game belongs to the Mets. Backman is on with one out and that'll bring up Keith Hernandez. Hernandez last night was one for five overall a decent series last night 
However, in his first three at bats, he stranded runners in each situation. A lot of missed opportunities for the Mets early on, but it did not come back to haunt them, thanks mainly to David Cohn. The Mets came out running last night with Dykstra on first, the first pitch, Backman hit and run. We'll see if they have the same philosophy tonight. Hershiser, a very good move. We talked about it earlier. He breaks that left knee. Tough to get a good jump on. Better to hit and run with. And he's very quick to the plate, as you saw right there. One and oh the count. You wonder about the velocity. I mean, Backman hit a pretty good pitch down in the strike zone. Got to it and just hit it over the shortstop's head. Normally you'd get on top of that ball. One and oh the count. Backman at first base. And one out in the first inning. One big difference, of course, in a game like this. If your starting pitcher struggles early in the regular season, you can afford to let him work through it, especially when he's the ace of the staff. Not tonight. One and the count. And he misses away, and it's 2-0. and oh. Well, that's the dilemma in my mind that Tommy Lasorda has. Here you have the guy that's been so outstanding the last couple of months. When do you relieve him if you need to? Uh, they used Brian Holton last night. He was pitched now in two consecutive days. Have a lot of other available pitchers, but it's tough to relieve your number one starter, especially early. The shot of Tommy indicated to me he's not real happy with the way Hershiser is throwing, at least at the moment. Well, velocity, you mentioned velocity, Jim. Velocity not nearly as important for Hershiser as some pitchers. A pitcher like Dwight Gooden, for instance. And it's 3 0. Oh. And the reason for that is Hershiser throws a sinker, and sinker ballers are. At times, are even more effective when they're tired. Well, Tommy John types. But my only problem is, is that when you pitch as much as he has, you've got to work a little bit harder to get the ball to home plate. And when, you, and when you do it, the ball straightens out. So when I say that he throws back when a sinker down and away, yet he still did not hit it on the ground. He hit it into into a left field. He may not have as good a velocity, so he doesn't have as much action on the ball. Mm -hmm. Three and one will watch Backman here held on by Hatcher at first nobody out in the first inning he goes and the pitch is grounded foul so it's three and two. Hey, the thing about pitching in big games as Tommy Lasorda said I want Bulldog to go out there and have the best stuff he ever had. You talked about the Mets turning it on and off as a pitcher you can't do that and uh, you know he hopes. And of course, he's never thrown between starts all year, and yet he relieved and then threw in between starts again the next day to, to try to help him out. If Backman ran 3 1, he's most certainly running 3 2 with Hernandez the hitter. Mm -hmm. And Hershiser pays him a visit and almost had Backman leaning the other way. Cannot get picked off in that situation, and that's what you have to tell yourself as a runner. Hershiser almost catching Backman. Leaning on that right foot. Three and two. Backman ready to take off. And that time his lead was a step and a half. <laughs> well, you combine a quick move, which Hershiser have a deceptive one, and then a good throw. I mean, he makes as good of throws to first as he does the home plate. So that really helps when you're trying to pick somebody off. Quickness doesn't help you if the ball's up about shoulder high. There goes Backman. He stumbled as he got going, and it's fouled away again. So it remains three and two. There's that little stumble on the first step. But you have to be cautious as a base runner at first base because it's not your problem to put the ball in play. It's almost a departmentalized play. You wait until the pitcher makes sure he throws and it's up to the hitter to make contact. One out no score first inning. Backman who singled at first. He goes and the pitch is fouled away again. So Hernandez continues to make Hershiser work. And this is another thing that of course Lasorda will be very aware of and not too happy with in a situation like this with Hernandez up there for right now eight pitches will be Hershiser's pitch count. And also where are those pitches they are not down in the strike zone they're up. Mm -hmm. Now that's not Oral Hershiser. 
And again, I mean, it's only the first inning. He's got to be a little bit, maybe not nervous, but apprehensive. He is trying to settle into a groove. He has been in such a groove. It's very odd to see him right now trying to get into it because he's been in a groove since the end of August. Of course, the, his main objective now is he knows he has to throw a strike to Hernandez. Let the guy get a little bit bigger lead, just throw a strike. Backman goes, and the pitch is high, and so the Mets have an immediate threat. Runners at first and second and one out and Darryl Strawberry having a very good series coming to the plate. Funny thing about Strawberry he's nine for twenty six and yet he hasn't had the real big hit the hit that would make you sit up and take notice. So here is probably the most heralded of the Mets at least offensively having a big series but kind of quietly. And he's three for eight facing Hershiser in the playoffs. Yeah, he's he's hitting 190 points higher than Kirk Gibson. But when you think of dramatic hits, you think of the two home runs by Gibson. Even though he did hit a home run off, way, way, way into right field off John Tudor. Strike got the corner, outside corner. Harry Wendelstead is calling the balls and strikes tonight. The full rotation complete now. Harry started there in Game One. John McSherry at first, Joe West at second, Dutch runner at third, Bob Davidson down the line and left, Paul Rungi in right. Two on, one out, and the 0 1 pitch is away, and the count is 1 and 1. The thing about being tired as a pitcher is that when you realize you don't have the velocity you'd like to have, you start reaching back and trying to maybe strain to throw the, to throw the ball hard. First room I ever had, Robin Roberts, throw the ball out in front of you. When you're tired, you can't do that. Two and one, the count. Again, high, as you pointed out earlier. He walked Hernandez. On the high fastball, Hernandez fouling back the high fastball, and you can see the concern on Tommy Lasorda's face. Let's go, Bulldog. Come on, Bulldog, is what he says. Of course, his great strength is the ability to throw ground balls if he gets the ball down. So one pitch can get him out of a big inning. Two on to Strawberry is grounded to the right side. This may be the pitch. Sacks to Griffin back to first. It out, just does beat it out to prolong the inning. Backman goes to third. So the speed of Strawberry and the Mets are able to avoid a double play because of that. Two down. I think they avoided the double play because of the double clutch of Alfredo Griffin. You can see bang bang at first, but Strawberry beat it. The double clutch to Alfredo Griffin or by Alfredo Griffin. It's a good throw from Sachs to the outside. Now watch. Now that little double clutch in the transfer allows Strawberry to beat the play. Not completely in no. sync was Griffin as he came across right. the bag. McReynolds at the plate takes a strike at the count of one one. So Kevin, who was three for twenty at the beginning of last night's game, and then was four for four with a sacrifice fly, but Hershiser has really had his number. Oh, for his last 18 against Oral. One and one. He has not had a hit against Hershiser since 1986 when he was a member of the San Diego Padres. So that means he's old for the Mets. Right, I'll tell you what, and if you're pitching and you know that, and I'm sure, I mean, Oral has a little computer he takes and he writes things down. I'm sure that's in there. You get a little nervous sometimes, you say the guys do. Especially after last night, the way McReynolds was swinging the bat, the count one and two. Now it's funny you talk to a guy like Kevin McReynolds and you say why don't you hit her side you'll say I never get a good pitch to hit. He probably does but when he does he fouls it off. And if you ask her he said I always make good pitches. And so far he's been able to do that. You can watch Sosha you can see if he's happy with where he's throwing the ball just by if he throws it where he moves. Her are working very slowly with Backman at third. Strawberry at first. And the one two pitch breaking ball inside it fooled him but the pitch was in off the plate in the count two and two. Well, again we talked about throwing a curveball out in front of you now he's underneath it. Usually when a pitcher gets under a curveball another one he doesn't have his rhythm yet which is possible but you can also be tired. Well that was a very, very seventh eighth innings. Yes. Very dangerous pitch right there. 
Sosha again moving outside early. Well, from what I've seen, I mean, he does not have a curveball yet, and that's one of his really main pitches. As Mike Smith said in the inside pitch, he can get his curveball any over any time, any count. 2 2 pitch is hit right into the glove of Hamilton. So it takes him 29 pitches, but he escapes a first inning jam. Dodger lineup tonight Steve Sachs at second base, Mickey Hatcher at first base. 60% of Kirk Gibson bats third in left field. <laughs> Mike Marshall is in right. Shelby in the number five spot with Mike Sosha. In the sixth spot, Jeff Hamilton, the third baseman, Alfredo Griffin, the shortstop, Oral Hershiser, who escaped the first inning quandary on the mound. Ron Darling to the mound for the Mets. The inside pitch on Ron from Mike Schmidt. The secret to Ron's success, in my opinion, is his great athletic ability and his attitude. He's one of the best fielding pitchers in the game. He just loves to play. He loves to pitch. He doesn't have overpowering stuff. He relies a great deal on finesse and deception. He has a running fastball that runs in on right-handed hitters and away from left-handed hitters. He must get ahead of hitters so he can stay out of the middle of the plate. His out pitch is his split-fingered fastball. He loves to get ahead of the hitter and get him to chase that split-fingered pitch. And so here is Ron Darling working for the second time in the series. He was paired with Hershiser on the cold, rainy day, game three, Saturday in New York. And he complained about the conditions, thought the game shouldn't have been played, and he can't complain about the conditions tonight. They're perfect. Now, he did spend two days in the training room after slipping and sliding his way through six innings. It's really hard to judge a guy after he pitched in those kind of conditions, but he did gut it out, didn't get hit hard, but gave up three runs. The most startling stat is 14 and one at home and only six and eight on the road with an ERA of about almost five runs a game. Steve Sachs takes low ball one, one of those. Sachs, Hatcher, and Gibson in the bottom of the first inning. I think gutted out is the key for Ron Darling. I think he's done that all season long. Sachs, who has stolen five bases in this series and had 42 in the regular season, leads off with a single. And up comes Mickey Hatcher. Sachs and Carter, excuse me, uh, Darling and Carter, out of the 15 stolen base attempts, only thrown out two. So everybody says he has a very good move, but takes a long time to get the ball to home plate. So the Dodgers feel they can run on him. You look at the Mets defensively with Sachs at first base, and the pitch to Hatcher is outside. Ball one, one and go. The reason I said that about Darling is because Darling has been pitching with pain this year. His right arm has been bothering him, and yet, in 25 of 34 starts, he has worked at least seven innings. You're talking about the supposed bone chips that we talked about earlier in the year. And he said one time they can be bothering him because they do float around. He said he'll get into late innings, put his arm up, and he'll just have pain. Sachs goes, gets a great jump, and it's a face hit down the line and left. As Sachs is on his way to third, Hatcher on his way to second with a double. And now Fatanid had held Sachs up at third base before Kevin McReynolds slipped in left field. Sachs had plenty of time to regain his momentum, but with nobody out, you just can't take the chance. Hatcher popping this fastball right down the line by a diving Greg Jeffries. Playing Hatcher in. Sacks three steps he's looking up and you'll see a Malfitano when a double is hit down the left field line you have to be a little more cautious it's an easier throw for the left fielder but Kevin McReynolds in fielding that ball slipped down but with nobody out of Malfitano could not take the chance of sending sacks. Why is he playing in excuse me Al. 
with the three, four, and five hitters coming up. Gibson at the plate and takes low ball one. Very unusual place to play a guy like Mickey Hatcher. It's not a bunt situation, not a pull hitter. You play deep, knock that ball down, or you make the play. But Mets infield playing back, and they'll give up a run on the ground ball and also on a fly ball this deep because backing up is Dykstra. Sachs is tagging, so is Hatcher. Both men advance. The Dodgers lead it one to nothing. Tonight, a 385 foot out to score a run. Look where the pitch is. Not up like David Cohn pitched him. It's down. He, he drives. He hit this ball a long way. Here, right down the middle. Outside part. Just missed a home run. You saw almost no stride at all. That's what Manny Moda and Kirk Gibson were working on in batting practice today. Don't make the weight shift. Just don't stride. And as was the case the other day, the infield is back with Marshall going after a breaking ball. So Davey Johnson did this the other day. We found it curious, but he got away with it. He was down 2 nothing and played the infield back and gave up another run on the ground ball and eventually came back to win the game. But what he's saying here is, I'm giving up a run on a grounder to go down 2 nothing, which means, of course, you've got to score three eventually to win the game. Well, that was in the fifth inning the other day. In the first inning, Normally you don't do it, but of course everybody knows this is not a normal ball game. 0 and 1 the count. In the dirt, and that saves a run, and the count 1 and 1. Before Marshall came up, Davey Johnson held out two fingers of his right hand, which would imply that for the infield to play back until Marshall has two strikes, and then you may see the, uh, the right side or even Elster move in. Because a hitter is in a more defensive posture with two strikes. We'll see. You think that Davey, who's a computer whiz, knows that Marshall's three for 18. You did, and he said, I chase bad pitches. Now, if you have that stat, you might play the infield in. One and one the count. And it's grounded foul outside third, so it's one and two. Now let's look at the infield. Elster. Elster saying to Backman move in. You're exactly right, Tim. That's what they're doing. With two strikes now, the Mets play their infield in. See, and Marshall chased two bad pitches. He said before the game, he says, I have to make him throw me strikes. He wants me to nibble. Of course, he doesn't do that, and now Darling has the edge. Look how far Hernandez is off mm. at first base. Mm. 30 feet. And a very big strikeout. In fact, a huge strikeout here in the first inning. With a man at third and one out, the infield can play at regular depth now with Shelby coming to the plate. Well, he likes to get ahead and then throw the split finger. Now, you see the ball, you see the spin on the ball, tumbling. Marshall, look how much he's over that ball. Boy, that's a great shot of Gary Carter anticipating the split finger fastball down. You could see him. See him going down as the, before the ball even got there, anticipating it down. Shelby at the plate. And of course, as far as Carter is concerned, not his best year by any stretch of the imagination, but all of the things that never show up in the box score. That pitch in the dirt, blocking the pitch in the dirt, and the pressure with somebody like Ron Darling and a man at third. Got the corner, one and one. Ben Hines, the Dodger hitting instructor with Lasorda. And Shelby takes away two and one. Well, of all the Met pitchers, especially the starters, probably has the least velocity. That's why it's that important for Ron to stay out of the middle of the plate. So he'll run it away from you, cut it in, throw the split finger and the curveball. Two and two. And then he throws you, sets you up. He has you looking away, 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 and throws that ball right by you. You consider he won 17 games, which is the most he's ever won in his career with a bad elbow, or at least an elbow that's bothered him off and on. He's had a marvelous year. Shelby, of course, strikes out a lot, nine times already in this series. And he lifts this one down the line in right field, and it is a foul ball, just foul. 
Oh. And Paul Rungi right on top of it to call it. Lasorda can't believe it. Less than a foot, I would think. We have had two, <laughs> much less. two plays now in this series where a left and right field umpire have come into play. One defensively and one offensively. This ball couldn't have been fouled by more than an inch. Mm. Oh, boy. And you can see Rungi holding his fingers slightly apart, indicating to Lasorda by that much. Mm. Two and two the count. The splitter gets him. Shelby strikes out for the 10th time in the series, and at the end of one, it's the Dodgers one and the Mets nothing. A note here for what it's worth in the history of the championship series, teams scoring the first run in the decisive game have won only five of 13. Decisive meaning either the seventh, as is the case now over the last four years, or the fifth game, because for the first 16 seasons, of divisional play it was a best of five but in the 13 series in which it's gone to that concluding game the team scoring first has won only five Dodgers score first here today one nothing in the second inning with Jeffries leading things off for the Mets and Hershiser who labored through the first and escaped unscathed is one and one with him. Jeffries Carter and Elster in the second inning two and one Jeffries has been the most dominating hitter against any pitcher as far as either side is concerned he has four hits against Hershiser in one walk in the air to deep right center field backing up as Marshall has a play makes the catch on the warning track and I'll tell you what one thing you got to be a quick study if you're going to be a good pitcher. And Hershiser, he did not get his curveball over. He did get it over to McReynolds. He's gone to the changeup. We have not seen him throw a changeup in the first two games. And you can see him just a little bit out in front. And that's why this ball doesn't go out of the ballpark. All those hits have been on fastballs. So here's Hershiser, and here's Marshall making the, the catch. Plenty of room. He's gone to the changeup early. Gary Carter with one out of the bases empty. Pops it in the air. Hatcher should have a play. Two down. And so Hershiser has retired the last four in a row. Remember, he began the game after getting Dykstra. Backman singled and Hernandez walked. He got Strawberry to hit into a force, and McReynolds lined out to end the top of the first. So two down now in the second inning, and Elster is the batter. It's great when he describes his his early. I guess athletic background he said I I finished first in the persona hit run and throw contest and then it was all downhill till I got to the major leagues <laughs> Elster takes a strike Hershiser made his major league debut on September 1st of 1983 and interestingly Darling made his big league debut five days later. So two men with similar experience locked up in one game for the pennant. One and one the count. And there's Darling on deck. Elster playing the last two nights because Howard Johnson has slumped through the series one for 17. So Davey Johnson brings Elster in off the bench. Two and one. That could present a problem. I don't know if Hershiser, he's only pitched once against the Dodgers, but you don't pitch against the guy. And Elster has hit nine home runs. You don't know where to go. Elster has more home runs against the Dodgers than any other Met. Very surprising. Three home runs for the year against Dodger pitching. He had nine overall this season in the count three and one. So now you're three and one. You know Elster's probably looking for a fastball, and you don't know what kind of bat speed he has. Let's say throw him a fastball right now, right down the middle of the plate. In there, three and two. I mean, if you can't throw an eight-place hitter, a fastball, 
In your oral Hershey's, you really <laughs> limited yourself. No, but what I'm saying is, is that you're a little bit wary only because you haven't pitched against the guy before, and that uh, you just don't know where he power, where his power is, what, whether he's a low ball hitter or a high ball hitter. That's a liner by Sachs and out into right field for a base hit. So on a 3-2 pitch, Kevin Elster prolongs the inning. If nothing else, even if Darling goes out, that's a, a big hit in the sense that it turns the lineup over. It would mean Dykstra would start the next inning instead of Darling. Right. Sandy Koufax used to talk about that. He said if you get the eighth hit, eighth hitter out, then you have the pitcher leading off the inning, and he can get out the one and two hitter. You always have the third hitter who's your best average hitter leading off two innings down the road. He's going to try to hit home runs instead of singles. Darling good hitting pitcher squibs one toward third fielded by Hamilton and his throw off the bag but Hatcher makes the catch and steps on first and down go the Mets in the second still one to nothing Los Angeles. Beautiful view of downtown Los Angeles sunset and this play ending the top of the second inning. And an errant throw and it threw one away last night. Doesn't seem very relaxed at third. He's got company too. Yes. <laughs> There's Steve Sachs trying to relax Jeff and mm -hmm. so's Mickey Hatcher. Well that's a great mm -hmm. shot yeah, there. Absolutely. You know, a lot of times it just takes the first breath. ball. Yeah. I mean this is what they said last night to, about Dave Cohn. Mm -hmm. Want to know? I, I loved it. it. They asked all of the Mets, "What'd you say to Cone last night when they they gathered around him after the two walks? Some of them were trying to pump him up, and others were trying to calm him down." Right. Well, yeah, Hernandez is yelling at him. Carter says, "Just take it easy, take a deep breath." <laughs> Backman says, "Are you all right?" I mean, of course, this is after he threw eight straight balls. Whatever that group therapy was last night, it sure worked. 2-0 pitch taken for a strike. Two and one. Well, you, you know all the self-help books that came out in the 70s. You know, saying you got to be honest with yourself, face reality, and all that. This this one game, bananas on that, <laughs> right? You got to trick yourself. Is what you got to do. You got to be a master of self-deceit. Uh, I like what you said at the beginning tonight. You've got to get down and not up. Yeah, that's right. Three and two to count. Everybody says you got to look yourself in the mirror. Uh uh. You don't. You don't dare look in a mirror. You liable not not like what you see before a game like this. Jeff <laughs> Hamilton is the perfect example yes. of a guy who's got to get himself down a little bit right now. <laughs> Three two pitch is grounded toward the hole. Base hit. A second inning leadoff single for Mike Sosha. Three hits now off Ron Darling. And Jeff Hamilton comes to the plate. Batting seven. Wally Backman three. plays closer to Third second base, base because he doesn't go to his right as well as he goes to his left. But also, Timmy, when you get a three and two count, you know a guy is going to throw a strike. You have yeah. to think maybe so she's going to pull the ball. And cheat a little more. You exactly. saw a ball, ball like Mickey Hatcher last night hitting a ball into right field. Well, Backman, Hernandez, of course, gives him that ability to play, that independence really, to play closer to second because Keith can range so far to his right. That's helped Backman a lot. But still, you'll see him closer to second than straight away at second. Hamilton at the plate. One and oh the count. Jeffries is even with a bag of third, looks into the dugout now and wants to see where Davy Johnson wants in position. Remember the other night, a tip off here in a bunning situation when I asked Lasorda why he had Sharperson hit for Hamilton in a curious move in game four. He said Hamilton can't bunt, even though he did have two sacrifices this season. And the count two and oh. Of course, where to play, whether you're a middle infielder or third or first baseman, is one of the most difficult things that a young player has to contend with. And yes. we saw Jeffries, I thought he was out of position playing Hatcher that close in. And of course, now he has to look in the dugout. You want me up or in or back? I mean, when you have a guy like Brooks Robbins, you never ever think about that because he, he's always playing, it seems, where, where the ball is going to be hit. We talk about Brooksy four years ago, Greg Jeffries was in high school, playing in a high school yeah. tournament. For Sierra High in San Mateo. Here it is, he's playing the seventh game of the playoffs. Base hit into left field. Sosha will stop at second, and it's already four hits in an inning plus off Darling. 
And how did they get him? He goes three and two on Socio. He goes two and zero oh on Hamilton. And the key to Darling, he cannot. And you see Mel Stoudemire right on the phone. They're not going to wait. And they've got Dwight Gooden and Sid Fernandez available in the bullpen between innings. They went to the pen, and you will only see that in a seventh game, be it a championship series or a World Series. This was two minutes ago. Mackie Sasser, the catcher, with Fernandez on a coffee break, and the Doc himself going to the bullpen. The thing about it is, though, both of them are starting pitchers, and they're used to warming up for 15 minutes. You, don't, you may not have that time now. Here's Griffin up there to bunt. Bunts, and it drops safely, base hit. With Hernandez backing up to the bag. Darling unable to get over there. It found the empty spot and the bases are loaded with nobody out. I am really surprised Hernandez wasn't playing even with the bag. He started out playing deep in the position. And Doc Gooden is warming up for the Mets. Hernandez is back. This ball normally caught. Darling breaks toward third. And Hernandez caught in between a base hit by Alfredo Griffin. Ten time gold Glover got a little bit confused because Darling and you can see his anger he knows his, his position is towards the third base line. You've always talked about how Hernandez's quick move towards third base always gives him an advantage to throw a runner out. Didn't do it then. Here comes Donaldmeyer Hirsch eyes of the batter Darling has faced eight batters. He's given up four singles a double and a sacrifice fly. Still he trails only one nothing. In a jam in the second inning I asked Gooden before the game how long would it take you to warm up he said what he had hoped to do tonight is go down in the second or third inning and loosen up and then be ready in the middle innings he said though if I'm needed in an emergency it would probably take me 10 to 12 minutes to warm up normally about 18 he said well, what always amazes me is uh, I started for almost 19 years is how they think that a starter who's been starting all year is going to go down and acclimate himself to the bullpen when you have a guy like Terry Leach who's done a marvelous job all year long. Maybe for an inning, maybe for an inning and a half or two innings, but as a long man, when you pitch a couple days before, uh-oh. -uh. Infield up at first and third, back at short and second, and it's one and oh on Hershiser. Of course, what Darling has to do here is minimize the damage. You think it's not easy to pitch in the National League? In the American League, you'd be facing a regular hitter here because of the DH. He's got a chance. Hershiser has not had a good year hitting, but had 19 hits last year, let all National League pitchers. One and one. For Darling, it's a little bit of deja vu, perhaps. He pitched game seven of the 1986 World Series and had to come out after three with the Mets trailing the Red Sox. But he was taken off the hook, of course, as the Mets subsequently rallied, thanks mainly to Ray Knight, to win the championship. One and one on Hershiser. One and two. And it's a big opportunity. You made a couple of bad pitches. Defense lets you down, but you got a pitcher up there. So Socha you, at third, Hamilton is at second, and Griffin at first, nobody out. So if you make the quality pitches, you have a chance to set up a double play with one out. Or maybe induce him to hit into one. Grounded toward Jeffries at third, and he drops the ball, throws to first. No, everybody safe, 2 nothing. And there's a rookie thinking about, am I coming home with it? Or what? Often when that happens, there's a peak. You're peeking at the base that you're going to throw it to instead of looking into the glove. Let's see if Jeff peeks or Greg. Pe yeah, he's peeking home. He's looking up at home. Watch it again before the ball gets there. See the look up? He was looking at home, and the ball hit the heel of the glove, and he's got to go to first too late. If he feels it cleanly, he has a chance because Sosha was right. the runner, and all you have to do is get the force at the plate, no tag. And they get nothing. It's 2 nothing. Sachs is the batter. The Dodgers trying to break it open early. Scored as an error. Another save by Carter. Oh, the big problem so far is Darling is not throwing the first strike over. He's falling behind 
every hitter. Hershiser going down to first base on this and running full tilt. And it looks like when he hits first base that he may have injured the left leg. We'll see. Bases loaded. Nobody out. And the 1-0 pitch to Sachs fouled away. One and one. Most pitchers would not run hard on that ball. They know it's a sure out. He doesn't doesn't give it his all. They get an out. He's running hard. He's thinking about a 5-2-3 double play. Exactly. As he's, he's moving down the line. Yeah. You can occasionally have mind blanks and forget about that. You know, you think the guy's just coming home, and all of a sudden he does go home, but you get doubled off at first. It's real difficult to make quality pitches when you're always behind. 3 2, 2 0, oh, now 2 1. Sachs looks for a fastball here. Oh, he he doesn't get it, right. he spits at it. That's what he got the base right. up the first time. Yep. Yeah. A 1 0 oh fastball. Yep. Trying to hit it right up back up the middle. Back up the middle for a base hit. Hamilton comes in to score. Griffin being waved in. The throw to the plate, not in time. 4 nothing. at second base meanwhile her, it Hershiser shaken up as we showed you on the replay and there's Bill Bueller out there to check him out and a wry little smile so it's not yeah. too serious but they just want to make yeah. sure here comes Gooden four nothing Dodgers back after this word from your local station. We mentioned Sachs looking for a fastball. Look how hard he hits this ball because Darling almost catches it. Good reflexes. The ball just hits so hard it's by him into center field. Darling backing up home and watch the play as Griffin crosses home plate. Initially, I thought Carter's foot tripped him, but from this angle, it doesn't appear that that's the case. He just took that last long stride and the left foot just. Dragged across home plate. Meanwhile, Hatcher bunts foul outside third. When we went to commercial, Bill Builder was out checking out Hershiser, and when Gooden came in to pitch, Hershiser was able to go to the bench for a couple of minutes. And of course, with Hershiser moving down to first base to beat the throw from Jeffries, and we showed you the replay, and a, I don't know, that's not really a limp, that's just his gait there. But it's interesting that he did not attempt to go to third when the throw came through. To try to get Griffin at home. He opts to remain at second. And now, not he's got, extend it. now he's got to run hard on the butt. Right. Except Hatcher swings away and grounds it to the right side. The runners advance as Backman throws him out. And the runners moving as Hatcher is able to move them over on a, what amounts to a swinging butt. Yeah, he moves them over so they can walk Gibson. Actually, the runners were running then. That is one of those rare hit and runs that managers talk about in spring training and rarely execute. Hatcher can handle the bat very well. Hershiser and Sachs taking off. You can gamble when you're up by four, and that's Tommy Lasorda's intention right here to gamble and try to blow the Mets out as early as he mm -hmm. can. Except by really, I mean, Hatcher may have had a chance to get a hit, but he, in essence, gives himself up, so you know they're going to walk Gibson. You got your number four hitter up there, though. Right, and one pitch gets you out of the, out of the inning, so. One pitch blows it out, too. That's true. 20 home runs on the year for Marshall, and he's having a good series. Interesting game. 
<laughs> Maybe that's because I never wow. threw a grand slam and I didn't never wanted to have the bases loaded. Well, Marshall will come up with the bases loaded, facing Dwight Gooden, making his first ever relief appearance. And if you follow the Mets through the years, you you know that they protected Gooden's arm. They never wanted him to pitch on three days rest. It was always four, and now he's forced to pitch on two. Another example of that is he's only had one regular season game where he's pitched more than nine innings. He did pitch uh, nine and two thirds innings, or nine and a third at Shea against Houston in the 86 playoffs. Not to mention they really watch his pitch count because he's a high fastball strikeout type of pitcher has a tendency to throw more pitches than other pitchers would, would normally do. Mike Marshall as you can see he finally figured Gooden out to some extent in the last couple of seasons. Infield double play death one out four nothing Dodgers strike. 0 and 1. Breaking pitch. Well, it might be because Marshall's really cut down on a swing because of the back injury. You know, it used to take a, a big long stride and come back. Now he looks almost like a right handed stand usual from a stance standpoint. That's grounded to the right side. Backman shovels, and that's a high throw, and they don't get anybody. Five to nothing as the Mets come apart at the seams in the second inning. Tell you what happened there. Wally Backman laid back on the ball instead of charging the ball. And, he, and by laying back, he didn't give the ball to Elster in time and Elster has one eye on Gibson watch a little soft toss and Elster's just thinking about one and in the transfer he drops the ball if Backman charges that ball then he has a chance for the underhanded play well he's what an far. effort by Kirk Gibson yeah, too far to throw the ball underhanded yep we saw Steve Sachs last inning throw it overhanded didn't get the double play but got the out Still the base is loaded as Shelby swings and misses. He's the ninth man to come up in a nightmarish second inning for the Mets. Their second error, they're down five to nothing, and the Dodgers still with the bases loaded and only one out. And it's 0 and 2. Shelby is the type of hitter you want up here especially if you're the Mets because he is a strikeout guy 128 during the year he struck out nine times during this playoffs. I know one thing on that last play you'd never know that Gibson has that hamstring problem. It was almost as if he was cured in a second. One and two I mean he's been we've been watching him for the last two nights and he's been limping and it's affected his swing but he looked like he was 100 percent healthy going between first and second. Mind over matter, I guess. I yep. don't know. Mind over tended. Yeah. One and two the count. <laughs> to deep left center field, backing up. Is McReynolds deep enough to score a run? Sachs comes in to score. Gibson's going to third, and Marshall goes to second. A sacrifice fly, and it's six to nothing. Gets a ball up in the strike zone and he hits it deep to left field and that's the right here Gibson limps a little bit but great speed you know he's going to tag up Marshall also tags up and gets into scoring position and the crowd boos the intentional walk to Sosha who began this parade with a single to right against Darling and now Hamilton will come up with the bases loaded to become the 11th Dodger to bat in the second inning. 
Tell you, you have heard of hills to climb. Well, the Mets collectively are facing the south wall of Everest. I'll tell you that. Straight up. Hamilton. He singled in the second inning in this inning. Gibson is at third. Marshall at second. Sosha at first. Two down. Oh and one. Sunday night at about 11 o'clock Davey Johnson's team was three outs away from going up three to one in the series. That was a long 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 time ago. One and one. And the Dodgers with all of that energy poured it into six runs three in the third three in the fourth Monday afternoon and beat the Mets seven to four. And part of that was the energy from the night before the momentum. Saved again by Carter. Two and one to count. Gooden has never relieved in his professional career, minors or majors. Foul tip, and it's two and two. That's what makes it so difficult for him to assume this role. He's never ever known what his arm's going to feel like two days after he started to try to get a hitter out. Two and two the count, two out. Bases loaded, second inning, six to nothing Dodgers. But the Dodgers send up 11. Score five to the third we go. The crowd going wild. Six nothing. Beautiful shot and all is peaceful and placid and beautiful for the fans at Dodger Stadium after that second inning. A complete nightmare for the Mets, especially the infield. Yes, this is the team that uh, led the National League in fewest errors. And right here, there's got to be a miscommunication. Darling's going to third. Hernandez thinks he's coming to first. The ball falls safely. Here's the play with the bases loaded. Jeffries peeking up at the runner at third. And the ball hits the heel of the glove. And the throw late to get Hershiser at first. And here a routine play, except he sh shovels it underhand instead of overhand off the bag. And Elster, he would have he would have off the bag anyway. He's going to yeah. be safe. He never assumed that the umpire is going to call that, but it appeared that. But the throw was so far offline, he would have been safe anyway. All right, now let's see about Hershiser. It's been a long time since he's been on the mound. He's also rounded the bases, and he's thrown a lot of pitches through two innings. So that's the, the little ray of good news for the Mets right now. Yeah, but the, the bad news is Lynn Dykstra swinging at the first mm -hmm. pitch with a six run deficit mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Particularly in lieu of the fact that Hershiser has a sore leg. You've he got to make him pitch. He was shaking his leg when he warmed up. 0 1 pitch. Dykstra runs up to bunt and doesn't commit, and the count is 1 and 1. Now it's the right leg, the one he pushes off of. Take a look again, very compact windup. Look at his right leg. Doesn't appear to bother him right now. He's a straight leg pitcher. He's not like a Tom Seaver, a drop and drive type pitcher. 2 and 1 on Dykstra. Bud Harrelson and Gary Carter and Kevin McReynolds in the third inning in Los Angeles Dodgers on top six to nothing.
off the glove and out into center field. Hershiser just tipped it, but really couldn't slow it down. And Dykstra starts the third inning with a single. So Len is on, and it brings up Wally Backman. Second baseman. Well, again, Lenny, then that's an unusual swing. He fakes a bunt. Again, it's a two and one count, so we could afford to do that. Bring the third baseman in and then hits a ground ball up the middle. You remember, we talked about it last night about how he tries to drive it by the third baseman. That play, it hits Hershiser in the right foot. Yeah, I thought it hit, tipped off the glove. It actually hit him at the bottom of the shoe. One and other count. On back. But that was that movement we were talking about with Dykstra in the batter's box. That unusual thing. He tries to suck the third baseman in to hit it by. Him. Backman lifts it in the air to left field. Gibson is there. One out. One gone with Dykstra at first. And that'll bring up Keith Hernandez, who drew a walk in the first inning. If the Mets score two or three runs now, they can erase some of that heading backwards or being pushed backwards by the Dodgers. But they have got to erase that five run second some way. You can't do it by coming up empty here in the third. And they have Hernandez, and then Strawberry follows him and McReynolds. Well, again, it depends what approach you take as a, as a hitter. You know, if Backman hits fly balls, and you know that's counterproductive because he's a ground ball hitter. Hernandez has to do what he does best, just go for singles. And just think of just think of the luxury that Hershiser has. I mean, he's been in all I mean all this almost all the games he pitched down the month of uh, September down the stretch were close ball games. First game two run lead for for eight innings. He only got him three runs in the second game. Excuse me got him four left with a four to three lead before the Jay Howell incident. So he knows one mistake can't can't beat him tonight. Now, the big thing from the Mets standpoint is you can't try to get them all back at once. You're not going to do that. It's, we used the football analogy the other day and it's the same as a quarterback not going for the bomb every time to overcome maybe a 20 point deficit early in the third quarter. Well there's no such thing as a six run homer. So it's a point well taken. Dykstra at first base. Jeffries. He's been to the top and the bottom in a very short period of time. He's experienced the heights and the depths in five weeks as Hernandez hits it foul down the line and the count one and two. Of course, when you look at last night's ball game, how did the Mets get their runs? They were aggressive. Six runs takes a lot of aggression away from an offensive attack. Can't Hatch, hit and run, can't steal. Hatcher still holding Dykstra on at first base. That's interesting with a six run lead. I would think that the Dodgers feel if, if they're going to give him second base, he's going to take it here. And so they do have Hatcher holding on, but again, it opens up the right side of the infield. Well, how, one, how about one step behind him? Of course, Hatcher again hasn't played first base that much. A little bit better chance to get a grounder in the hole. Stay away from the big inning. 2 2 pitch is grounded down to Sachs. He goes to Griffin one back to first double play. At the end of two and a half. The Dodgers six and the Mets nothing. Six to nothing the Dodgers on top. And what about Kirk Gibson if you're Tommy Lasorda. The way Gibson's reacting here. The sort of maybe telling him he's going to put Gonzalez into the lineup when we go to the fourth inning. We'll see. Griffin grounds out on the first pitch in the bottom of the third. And it will bring up Oral Hershiser. A reminder coming up on Saturday college football, third ranked USC hosting Washington, or Michigan takes on Iowa at 3 30 Eastern time. Now, Tim, if you're Lasorda, what, what do you do here? It's six to nothing. You've got the gimpy Gibson, even though he obviously has run very well tonight. You've got Jose Gonzalez, an outstanding defensive outfielder. What do you do? I think you, the game? I think if there's any doubt as to whether he can go full speed like he did to second base, you take him out and play a defensive game, even though it's a third inning. 
I mean, it's not like Gonzalez is, has no experience as a major leaguer. He's been up parts of three seasons, and I think he'll be in the game in the top of the fourth. One and, and two the count. You got six innings left, and you want the best defense you can throw out there. Even at the risk of sacrifice. I mean, Gibson's already been the inspiration for six runs to be scored, or at least a case can be made for that. And also, you don't want to jump the gun, but you've got to keep in mind hey, you've got a pretty good chance to go to the World Series right, right now, and why take that extra little chance and maybe lose him? Backman throws Hershiser out. Oral only going about halfway down the line to first, and he took that play off. But if ever a guy deserved to, it's him here. Two down. Gibson and Second Charlie baseman. Strasser. This is almost as a big as a debate as we're going to have tomorrow night. It's a monumental uh, decision here. But you you know that Gibson doesn't want to come out. <laughs> But his body language indicates to us that Lasorda has already told him. Sacks at the plate. Knocked down by Gooden. And the Dodgers have gone one, two, three. To the fourth inning we go. It's the Dodgers six and the Mets nothing. As we went to commercial, Kirk Gibson done for the night. And you'll see Franklin Stubbs come into view. He'll grab his first baseman's glove. And he'll bat in Gibson's spot, and they'll move Mickey Hatcher to left field. So Gibson goes limping up the runway. As we start the fourth inning. Hatcher now in left field. So Mickey moves from first to left. Stubbs in the lineup in the number three spot. And Strawberry lifts a fly ball in the shallow left center field. Shelby, one out. Well, we speculated about Jose Gonzalez coming into the ball game. And it's kind of an interesting move because Mickey Hatcher is not your best defensive left fielder. If they're going to get Stubbs in there for as a left-handed hitter to face a right, I mean you do have the alternative of Danny Heap, yeah, who hits your much better as a, as a regular player than he does a pinch hitter, and then you save Stubbs if you have to to pinch hits. So you only hurt yourself defensively in one place. Yeah, and you leave Hatcher at first, who appears to be more comfortable than Stubbs has been, at it's, least of late. Yeah, and there's Gonzalez, who would probably, if this lead holds up for the Dodgers, eventually get into the game. In the eighth or ninth inning. 0 oh 2. Of course, who are we to second guess Tommy? I mean, he's only got a 6 0 lead in the seventh game of the playoffs. O2 oh pitch. Well, again, to, I hope, if nothing else, it puts to rest win or lose for Lasorda. I and mean, we've touched upon it a couple of times during the series the fact that Tommy seated with Joe Amalfitano. A larger than life character to a lot of people, and you tend to overlook his managerial skills. But we mentioned in game one, his record speaks for itself. Finishes first six times in 12 years as a big league manager, five times in eight years as a minor league manager, two other times with the Dodgers. The team goes down to the final day of the season. Hit down the line in right field. Stubbs chasing it, but Franklin can't get there. A foul ball. And the count remains two and two, and a nice hand for Stubbs's effort. He runs well for a big man. Had 11 stolen bases. Used to play the outfield for the Dodgers, and you can see not only does he have good speed, following the ball all the way, just out of reach. I think about a couple of years ago, back in 1986, they did a game in Houston. They had Len Matuzic playing left field, Franklin Stubbs in center. In right field, they had Mike Marshall and Greg Brock. Playing first. And they have four first basemen <laughs> playing in defense. You wonder why they're a better club this year? Got him on a breaking pitch. Fooled him and down he goes. And McReynolds more frustrated over the score than anything else because there was no doubt about that pitch. Well, it's a combination of both of them. This ball does not break. It's they call a hanging curveball, just a backup curveball, and apparently uh Wendelstad thought it got the inside corner. I think uh, Kevin thinks the ball was high. You don't see a motion from him. 
Line drive base hit by Jeffries with two out here in the fourth inning. The strikeout of McReynolds was the first for Hershiser. Yes, so Jeffries with a Gary single. Carter. The Mets have four hits, but Hershiser has spaced them. One single in each of the first four innings, and up comes Gary Carter. I'll tell you, you can't help but be impressed by the heart of Kirk Gibson. I mean, here's a guy on a three year contract the first year, and it's very comfortable nowadays for people to criticize athletes with long term contracts. But here's a guy you'd never know that Kirk Gibson has a long term contract. You would think the way he's been playing that his contracts run out and he's seeking something. Gardner hits a two bouncer to Griffin. He makes the play himself. That's down to the fourth after three and a half. Dodgers six. That's nothing. Back at Dodger Stadium after this word from your local station. The Dodgers with a run in the first and then five in the second when they sent 11 men to the plate. Lead six to nothing. As you look down from the Goodyear Blimp, Columbia. Dodger Stadium. Sort of reminiscent right now of the way Royal Stadium felt in the seventh game of the 1985 World Series when the Kansas City Royals exploded early and eventually blew out the Cardinals 11 to nothing. The Dodgers have a pitcher that remembers that game, John Tudor. Absolutely, who was the starting pitcher that night. And before that night was done, Tudor was getting stitched up in the hospital after punching an electric fan. Hatcher hits one off the end of the bat on the ground a second, and Backman throws him out. One away in the fourth inning, and it will bring up Franklin Stubbs. That's what a good curveball do to you. Mickey has Timmy has said all during the series just a free swinger. Ball he hit the second base that'd be about four inches outside. Franklin Stubbs now hitting in Gibson's spot. And it was Stubbs who started this series. You'll recall he was the opening night first baseman. And tried to bunt at a very curious time, and that, as much as anything else, caused Lasorda to remove him from the lineup. It's funny how you don't forgive somebody with an average of around 225. And then last night, I mean, what's Lasorda going to say when everybody says to him, "What in the world was Gibson doing in the first inning?" Tommy backed him to the hilt, one and one. So did Davey Johnson. He didn't want to get him angry. He said, "I assume he's trying to get him over." Because I think the the bunt that he failed to have later on in game game one was even worse. He didn't execute a bunt in a sacrifice situation. Ripped into left center for a base hit. Franklin Stubbs with a one out single in the fourth inning. Right fielder Mike Marshall and Mike Marshall coming up. Johnson has to think about Gooden now. He's batting second in the top of the fifth inning. Oh, fastball hitter usually likes the ball down, but if you're going to swing at the high fastball, off Dwight Gooden, you better try to go the other way, and he does. Much better fastball hitter than breaking ball hitter. Mike Marshall, 0 for 2, tries to check his swing. 0 and 1. I'll tell you, I couldn't help but look at those two cards next to the Mets lineup, the ace and queen of spades. Mm -hmm. You see it right between Mel Stottlemyre and Davey Johnson. And we alluded to it last night, the queen being 13 points in a heart game. And I'll tell you what, that queen of spades has taken on a different significance with the Mets trailing six to nothing. At the moment, I think somebody sneaked the joker in there. Grounded down to Backman. He shovels to Elster and back to first, and this time they turn it. And at the end of four, it remains Dodgers six, Mets nothing. Dodgers leading by a score of six to nothing in game seven with the pennant at stake and Hershiser on the mound and 58 pitches for Earl through four. And the changeups, I think he's thrown maybe a few more of those, and that's the big difference. Has not thrown any changeups. Saw that his curveballs were not going over early. Went to that, got out of some trouble, and now he's got a six-run lead. 
And Elster will lead off, and then Magadan will come up to hit for Gooden. And then we'll see Dykstra, the 8, 9, and 1 spots in the order. The Mets with four hits, all singles, one in each of the first four innings, as Elster takes a strike. 0 and 1. So Magadan will be next. Six runs, seven hits, and no errors for the Dodgers. No runs, four hits, and two very costly errors for the Mets. Squib backhanded by Hershiser. One guy. You lead six nothing. You can't smile. Take a look at very compact windup as I said good curveball not in great fielding position but the ball's not hit hard right off the end of the bat. Ooh. A little hot dog but six run lead you make a good pitch and you get a little bounder back to the mound you got to be happy. Hershiser a remarkable athlete played for the Philadelphia Flyers junior hockey team he's a scratch golfer. Well, not scratch four, but that's scratch enough. That's scratch to yeah. me, baby. <laughs> well, he said when, when you were a kid, he said, I, I had a lot of problems. He said, who wants a kid that wears glasses and arms hang down to their knees on your team? <laughs> what's, Strike. A, oh, yeah. what's amazing about him, if you watch his windup, the posture is so important on a pitcher, and uh, one of the keys is your opposite shoulder. You always have to eventually get that down look at the way he kind of just leans forward so he's in a proper position to, to release the ball talk about efficiency of emotion again a tuck it looks reminds me a lot of Don Sutton a little bit different variety of pitches Don didn't throw a sinker but Don with well over 300 wins what you do is you put the pressure on the back muscles are much stronger than your arm because if you fall on your heels you look at Bob O'Hit on your right, Keith Hernandez. Bob O'Hita, who of course had the injury to his finger, said he thought he'd be throwing in three weeks. Here's the one-two to Magadan. Got him. Changed up on him, and down he goes. And it's two strikeouts for Oral Hershiser. So two away with the bases empty in the fifth inning. Gary Carter. Field, knowing right? his team right. is right. down by six with two out in the fifth inning and Dykstra coming up and Hershiser on the mound and Howell ready in the bullpen if needed down the line. And on the road. And it's funny and we talked about it to an extent last night how insignificant what happened in the regular season becomes in postseason. To left field and racing over his hatcher, and he makes the catch. At the end of four and a half, it's the Dodgers six and the Mets nothing. In Los Angeles, Al Michaels, Jim Palmer, Tim McCarver with Terry Leach coming in to pitch for the Mets. Oral Hershiser shutting out the Mets through five. Dodgers all smiles on top six to nothing. Started to mention about the insignificance of the regular season. The big storyline coming into this series the two teams during the regular year the Mets winning 10 out of 11 the Dodgers limited to 18 runs and how insignificant that all seems right now. The Dodgers four innings away from 1974 Radu as they would take on the Oakland A's in the World Series and it would start here on Saturday. John Shelby leads things off. Has struck out and hit a sacrifice fly. <laughs> oh, and two. Such a, such a deceptive windup. Terry Leach is a submariner. Oh, ten games in a row for the Mets last year as the starter. 11 and 1 on the, on the year total. 1 and 2 the count. I see too many pitchers that throw from this and this delivery point way down, which is right knee. You can see the dirt spot on it.
Two and two the count. I'll tell you, if you're the Dodgers right now, you want to finish the Mets off. You want to knock them out. The Mets are a staggering boxer in the 12th round right now. There's still a chance. I'm sure Tommy Lasorda would feel more comfortable with three or four more runs. Shelby down on strikes. You know, the other night when Mike Sosha hit the home run and he comes up to bat here, if this series is a seesaw, this is what Denver. tilted Mike one Sosha. side to the other. This was it. Ninth inning. Man on after the walk to Shelby off Gooden into the bullpen and before the night was done and into the next morning after 12 o'clock it was the home run by Gibson the save by Hershiser the victory later that day in game five and that's when the series turned if the Dodgers do win Mike Sosha could be the MVP of the series he led off the five run second tonight. Well you'd have a few candidates even though Gibson's average is extremely low. Obviously two very key hits and then there's the man on the mound. And even though Oral Hershiser has not won a game in this series he's had two no decisions. He's pitched very well in those starts. He of course had that save under extraordinary circumstances the other night. And now he's on the mound tonight. And it's funny I think you know the contrast was interesting in the starting pitching tonight Ron Darling quoted as saying they never should have played the game and spending time in the trainers room and Oral Hershiser threw more pitches under the same conditions on Saturday and came out of the bullpen after midnight on Sunday and warmed up on Monday and said he was ready on Tuesday. One guy went to Yale and Oral said he was academically ineligible his first year in college. There's always a saying in baseball. Things don't go well. You're thinking too much. Base hit for Sosa. So his perfect night continues with two singles and a walk. And it will bring up Hamilton. In fairness, though, to Darling, without coming down too hard on Ron, with his arm difficulties, minor as they may be or not be, and we don't know this year. He had a reason to complain a little bit about Saturday. Oh, he didn't pitch that poorly tonight. Of course, it got behind some hitters, but the defense was deplorable back in the second inning. I mean, you make a combination of bad pitches and then bad defense, and that's how you get a five-run inning. That's what happened back in the second. Hamilton at the plate. 0 and 1. Funny thing about what you anticipate from a team and what the end result is if the Dodgers had lost tonight or if they do lose the season is still a success and they surprised a lot of people by winning the West when they were picked to finish fourth or fifth but for the Mets it's a whole other feeling because almost everybody expected them to go all the way. One of the burdens of being picked when you have to and don't. Very, very disappointing. Well, when you saw a picture of Davey Johnson, I mean, here's a guy that came, won 90 games in 98, then 106, then 92, and then 100. And most people feel that for him to be rehired, he has to win. At least we've seen no other indication of anything else. Can't be happy at this moment. Of course, he also doesn't play. You know, he puts the lineup out there and hopes they'll play well. That's one of the problems with managing sometimes. Hamilton stays alive, still 0-2. I mean, when you think about it, the Dodgers overwhelming underdogs in this playoff series. You take position for position, and a case can be made that the Mets are as good or better than the Dodgers at every position. The Dodgers match up to the Mets as far as starting pitching is concerned, not the bullpen. But it's been the Dodgers emotion that has gotten them this far and it could be the thing that finishes the Mets off. Fouled away still 0 and 2. And what's really amazing as far as the Dodgers are concerned if they go on to win is to be able to bounce back 
after as disheartening a loss as Lasorda has ever suffered. Game one, you've got Hershiser working on a shutout. You're a strike away, and the next thing you know, it's 3 2. And that's about as down as you can be when you come to the park the next day. And that's when we have to remember the great job that Tim Belcher did. He's won two games, he's gotten some run support, but for a rookie pitcher to come in under those circumstances and pitch that type of game with 10 strikeouts is all time high in the major leagues. Quite a performance. To McReynolds in left. And Kevin puts it away for the second down. So two down here in the fifth inning with Sosha at first base. And that'll bring up Alfredo Griffin. Now you could take that two steps further, actually. What about the Dodgers in game four bouncing back after Jay Howell was suspended by National League President Bart Giamatti? And tonight, another situation. David Cohn pitches a masterpiece last night. And everybody once again says, well, the Mets are ready for the knockout punch or whatever it is. And the Dodgers are ahead six to nothing. So really three games that they've come back after after victories by the Mets. Mm -hmm. And there is David Cohn who went to the mound last night staggering at the start but when it was all over he had the only complete game in the series a 5 1 masterpiece to keep them alive. One and one to count. If you missed it before the game Johnson without a contract for next year and the Mets holding that in abeyance until after postseason play and I asked Davey if he felt a win tonight was necessary to come back next year he said he'd hope not. I said do you want to come back next year he said definitely. Remember last year the Mets went through that situation where they said that Johnson would retire after this season and assist Frank Cashin in the front office. Which was a bit of a charade as it turned out. And then this year both Johnson and Lasorda on last years of contracts and, and the Dodgers waited until June but they wanted to defuse the issue and they gave Lasorda a new two year deal. Three and one. I remember we did a Monday night game I came in here and Lasorda brought it up that night. Not that Tommy was worried about it but when he brought it up it told me all I needed to know about the situation and the fact that Lasorda was a little curious himself as to his future with his ball club. As Griffin hits it foul on the count three and two. And from what I understand uh, he and Peter O'Malley were on a talk show and some fans called up supporting Tommy Lasorda saying that he deserved a contract. And Peter O'Malley took him to dinner after the show. They talked about it. And from my understanding, that's when they reached an understanding mm -hmm. that Tommy should get a two year extension. Mm -hmm. And he signed it. Over pasta fajol, you can be right. sure. It's ridiculous. <laughs> that's what he said. Some people do it over drinks. He said, I did it over pasta. Anabolic pasta. Three and two. Socha taking off with the pitch. And Griffin pops it up. Elster. On the skin part makes the catch. Dodgers done in the fifth after five in game seven. It remains Dodgers six. That's nothing. You know, hersheiser has been so perfect, especially down the stretch. He didn't look like the oral Hershiser of September for that oh first inning or inning or two tonight, Jim, but all of a sudden he got into the groove and it's amazing what a six-nothing lead will do for well, you. Well, he got a one run in the first inning and then five in the second. And I get the feeling he's like the uh, Clark Kent of pitchers. He shows up with just normal street clothes and glasses, puts on a Dodger uniform, those contact lenses, and then goes out and does what he's done since the end of August. He's either Clark Kent or Captain Marvel. <laughs> Shazam, right? Yes. <laughs> he's missed a wonderful to Lasorda right now as Backman starts the sixth inning with a ground ball to Sachs. And one second baseman throws out. His opposite number one down. Hernandez coming up Saturday, 3:30 Eastern time and 12:30 in the afternoon Pacific. Regional action. You'll see either Washington against USC or Michigan against Iowa on ABC's College Football this Saturday. Keith Hernandez walked and hit into a double play. 
0 and 1. You know, you have to admire his, his heart, not only for this year and what he's been able to accomplish and what we've seen over the last 10 days, but he was 16 and 16 last year, lost eight one run ball games, 14 and 14 the year before. Both clubs were 73 and 89, so they were losers. He played 500, which is actually better. Yet he's never changed his style. I mean, Keith Hernandez says, I think he's thrown a little bit harder. Her ball's a little bit sharper. But that be, that might be because of the mental frame of mind. I mean, he here's a guy that did so much the last three or four days, yet he felt great about going out there. Other people would say, oh, I'm a little tired, but I'm going to go out. He just said, hey, I feel great. great. No built-in excuse for him. No question. One and two. And there's a luxury of being a sinker ball pitcher. I mean, even though I would, you know, you talk about Tommy John throwing about 82 miles. This Orals 88. 91 miles per hour. The ball sinks. Time call. Harry Wendelstadt was looking over into the stands. I don't know if somebody was flashing a mirror or what. But whatever it is, it's been rectified. You saw that graphic. Very interesting. The first pitcher to start three games in a National League Championship Series. If he were to have a no decision in this game. He would be the first pitcher to have three no decisions as a starting pitcher in the history of baseball in postseason play. And down goes Hernandez. Strikeout number three for Hershiser. Of course, until 85, championship series were only best of five. But not only does he have three starts in this one, he's got that one relief appearance. And that's the last pitch that Keith Hernandez expected. It just freezes him. Hasn't been getting his curveball over. Went to the changeup early. Comes back with a curveball, and you can see the frustration. Didn't expect it. And if you're a Dodger fan, how much can you love now? Six nothing in front. Sixth inning to all in unison with that mocking Darrell Darrell chant enveloping Dodger Stadium. But it may be a love call as well because he's already. Gone on record as saying he'd eventually like to play here. Lasorda was looking up to something going on in the stands, and we can't see what's going on. And that has caused the last two stoppages. Now we're ready again, and the pitch is up high to a chorus of Darrell, Darrell, one and oh. That's, well, that's. Probably a, uh, a local television crew, I would assume, and a light, and that's the problem. And somebody has to get word to them. It's either a light or ET. <laughs> I said a Bud Light. Two and oh the count. And it's three and oh on Strawberry. Taking all the way, three and one with McReynolds on deck. Up on a 3 1 count with a six run lead. Well, I'll tell you what, he wouldn't have thrown if he didn't think he'd get it over. But also, good pitchers don't like to give up runs. I think, I don't know if it's a change up, he took, he's definitely off speed, but he maybe just a BP fastball. At the end of five and a half, six to nothing, Los Angeles. Oral Hershiser to lead things off. The man of the hour at Dodger Stadium in the bottom of the sixth inning. Followed by Sachs and Hatcher. In game seven, the Dodgers with a run in the first and five in the second. When they sent 11 men to the plate, leading 6 0. And Hershiser tries to bunt his way on 0 and 1. He 
did this game and back in game three of course it was raining. Talked about last year 19 hits led all National League pitchers this year he hasn't hit that well a lot of bunts 19 sacrificed bunts so while he hasn't had a great year average wise he's done his job that you have to do in the National League. Had a great stroke in batting practice but that doesn't count. No. He knew he wasn't throwing batting practice. Talk about Terry Leaf. Line to left field and hooking away from McReynolds but he gets there to backhand it. So Kevin on the run to take care of Hershiser. One down and a huge ovation again for Hershiser as he trots back to the dugout. I think the impressive thing about Hershiser so far is that he's pitching this game like it's a one run game. You consider that sequence of pitches to Strawberry a 1 0 breaking ball, a 3 1 change up, and a 3 2 curveball. Well, great pitchers, what they do, they go out and they try to throw a shutout. When they give up one run, they try to throw a one run ball game. He hasn't given up a run yet. Sachs takes a strike, 0 1. Balls quiet on the eastern front. Oh and two. Three for four. He scored twice. He's driven in two. Outfielder, Reggie Hatcher. And it will bring up Hatcher. What's he doing? Ordering champagne? <laughs> Hatcher, one for three. One and all. If Hershiser can pitch like it's still a close game, I think the Dodgers offense should treat it as a close game too. And again, go for the throat. Six runs, team like the Mets can come back. Expect Sacks to run. One and one. Well, either that or hit and run. Again, Hatcher yeah. handles the bats away. Well, you got to do something to try to get a couple more runs. We talked about tacking on runs. It makes Oral's job a lot easier. Makes Tommy's job a lot easier and it makes the Mets job that much more difficult. And Hatcher fouls it at the plate. One ball and two strikes. The Sacks at first and one out in the bottom of the sixth inning. And the Dodgers on top in game seven, six to nothing. Mickey Hatcher. The Dodgers traded him away the year before they were last in the World Series in 81. And then he was sent away by Minnesota, released last year, and the Twins went on to win. So he's been on the verge twice, and now he's closer than ever. To left field and deep, but playable for McReynolds. Sachs is tagging and takes about five steps towards second and holds on at first as Hatcher just missed getting all of that one too bad. That's a good play that Sachs goes back. I mean, it's an easy fly ball. He read it off the bat. He knows that McReynolds is an outstanding left fielder, so. But you don't know he may fall down catching the ball and you might have been able to advance into scoring position. Well they say go halfway but. Not on a routine ball like that and it, it, it was hit fairly deep. Especially for Hatcher with only one home run all the entire season. Two down Stubbs with sacks going and Stubbs rips it into right field for a base hit. Strawberry backhands on a hop and throws into second with Sack stopping at third. And Frank 
Jacqueline Stubbs, who came into the game when Gibson left, is two for two. And that's ten hits now for the Dodgers. A good low ball hitter, and look where the ball is. Really about belt high, right down the middle. Leach, a sinker baller, and Sacks running, knows he's going to go to third, but he's thinking home. Now he's going to wait for the third base coach to stop him. Otherwise, he's thinking, I can score on a long single. Two out, two on. Amalfitano with Sacks as Mike Marshall steps in. One of the few not to join the hit parade tonight. He's 0 for 3. Marshall, one of the few major leaguers that has credited bowling for his concentration. When he was 14 years old, he used to bowl with a lot of guys a lot older than he. And he said that helped him mature. So bowlers take heart. I wonder his back hurts. <laughs> I mean, really, 6'5", yeah. and it's a long way to the, uh, to, I mean, not that I know the proper bowling. If you look at Aguilera on the left and Bob McClure, who is the first time he's been up in this entire series. Tells you something about the score. Really, you know. 1-1 one, one pitch. It's grounded toward third. Scooped up by Jeffries, and the throw is low, but Backman is there to make the grab at the bag. For the seventh, six-nothing Dodgers. McReynolds will lead off, then Jeffries will bat second in the inning, and Carter hitting third. Go back and take a look here at Stubbs. I'll tell you, credit John or Franklin Stubbs with hustling the second base. That's really what's virtuous about base runners. It's not virtuous when you beat out an infield hit. That's not hustling. What's hustling is to get a run for a ball club, and that's what Stubbs was doing then. And credit Backman, too, on a throw just above the bag at second base. As McReynolds grounds it down to Griffin. A nice convenient hop for Alfredo. One away. And Alfredo may be going back to Oakland. And there's a big Oakland connection with Jose Gonzalez now taking over in left field as Hatcher is done for the night. The Dodgers with Griffin coming over and Jay Howell. And they signed Mike Davis as well. And of course, on the other side, you've got Bob Welch and Rick Honeycutt, who would meet their former mates in an all California series. As 1974 would be revisited. That year, the A's beat the Dodgers in five in the World Series. It's a good trade for everybody. I mean, really, you know, Belcher pitched well here. Welch pitched great, won 15 games up there, 15 or 16. Great pitcher at home. The advantage, though, and of course, if the Dodgers do go to the World Series, is that Oakland's had a chance to set up their pitching rotation. The big question is, in my mind, Will Hershiser go all the way tonight and then have to come back on three days rest to pitch game number two. Seems like Oakland stuck to the West Coast. They get Dave Henderson after declaring free agency from San Francisco. Storm Davis comes up from San Diego and wins 16 games. Well, La Russa with a great year as a manager but great coaching staff. Dave Duncan their pitching coach former catcher. I threw to him knew a lot about pitching. Bob Watson. It's changed Dave Henderson's stance a little bit. He had a career year. Not to mention Conseco and McGuire. They have awfully good ball club with Walt Weiss making a big difference, allowing him to trade Griffin here to, to the Dodgers. Two and one with one out on Jeffries. And it's three and one. Dodgers trying to go to the series for the first time since 81. It would be Lasorda's fourth trip. Hatcher done for the night, but still up, up and at him. Well, somebody's got a pace for Kirk Gibson. <laughs> Three and two. Kirk, we understand, in the clubhouse and in a great deal of pain, having the hamstring iced down. Well, if things remain as they are, he'd have two days of rest. And the Dodgers would remain here because the World Series this year starts in the home park of the National League winner. 
Mentioning Lasorda's fourth series, Tommy got to the World Series his first two years, 77 and 78, losing both times to the Yankees. That's driven to deep right field. Marshall goes all the way back and can't make the catch as it caroms back off the wall, and Jeffries pulls in at second with a double. So the Mets get their first extra base hit. Jeffries has his second hit. It's the third time he's hit the ball hard tonight, and it will yes, bring sir. up Carter. Gary Carter. This is the sixth hit off Hershiser by Greg Jeffries in this series. I believe it's the first extra base, not his first extra base, because he did hit a curveball off Belcher. Great effort by Marshall, but ball right about at the middle of the three off the wall. Good play by John Shelby to back him up to keep it at a double. And the Dodger bullpen will get busy for the first time tonight. I'll tell you what Carter can do is bunt, drag bunt, and Hamilton should be alert at third base. One and oh. Really a good time to do it. You are trying to play the one base at a time type of offense as you see John Tudor and Alejandro Pena warming up for the Dodgers. Tudor warming up in case they want to get a left handed hitter as Carter hits one to center field. Right at Shelby. Jeffries tags but he's not going anywhere. And there are two down. And that will bring up Kevin Elster. I'll tell you what, Shelby didn't make a good throw, but he got rid of the ball so quickly that I mean, even in this situation where you don't think about going, Jeffries just stayed good at second. Up. Kevin Elster. I'll tell you, conceivably, that may have been Gary Carter's last at bat as a Met. I mean, there's been talk about him being traded to San Diego, packaged with. A bunch of guys, Dave Magadan has been mentioned, Lynn Dykstra has been mentioned, Sid Fernandez has been mentioned, and the two catchers that San Diego has in their farm system, Sandy Alomar Jr. and Benito Santiago. Santiago, the rookie of the year last year. Sosha has that one skitter away and moving to third on the wild pitch is Jeffries. And Sandy Alomar Jr., the son of the third base coach of the Padres, Sandy Alomar, a marvelous prospect, one of the best prospects in baseball. I tell you, Gary looks like he's packing his catcher's equipment. And his counterpart, Mike Sosha, a tough play. I'll tell you, when a catcher does that, that means they're packing up. And And Mackie Sasser, if Sasser does pinch hit, even though Howard Johnson's out there now, we may see Sasser. I don't know. Carter does have a separate catching bag. We'll see if he comes out in the bottom of the seventh. Well, a strike here. Sasser putting the gear on because what's happening here is you've got Elster batting. Leach do up next, obviously, you pinch hit, and then you make the double switch and insert the pitcher into Carter's spot. One of the bad boys that travel with the Mets from New York. The Mets have brought several West with them. Of course, Oral will just settle for a routine two hopper to Griffin. Big difference this year and last year. He said a better defense. Dave Anderson, who may come off the DL to be eligible for the World Series if they win tonight. Marvelous shortstop when Griffin got hurt. Says, I never have to look at a ground ball shortstop anymore. Two and two. Jeffries at third, two down, seventh inning. Dodgers ahead, six to nothing. <laughs> to left field and deep, but playable for Jose Gonzalez. And the 
at the end of six and a half. It remains Los Angeles six, New York nothing. Well, it's beginning to look very much as if those tickets will be used. World Series tickets for game one, which will be played here on Saturday. And game two as well, and then the uh, middle three games in the American League Park in Oakland. And the final two, if necessary, back here at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, where the Dodgers lead the Mets by a score of six to nothing. One run in the first, and then 11 men to the plate in the second inning. The Mets made two critical errors, and another that doesn't show up in the scorebook on the bunt to the right side with Hernandez going back to the bag and nobody there to field it. And the Dodgers, when the inning was done, had scored five, and it's been that way since the second. Six to nothing back of Hershiser. Here's Rick Aguilera out of the bullpen now to face L.A. in the bottom of the seventh inning. And he'll look at Shelby, Sosha, and Hamilton as Mackie Sasser comes in to catch. Sasser will hit in the number nine spot, meaning he will lead off in the eighth inning. And with Carter done, and as Tim mentioned, it could be the end of Gary's career as a Met. You don't know, but it's possible. Aguilera bats in Carter spot number seven. John Shelby, 0 for 2 tonight, plus a sack fly. 0 and 1. You talk about possible trades. Rick Aguilera, 11 game winner last year, had elbow problems, allowed David Cohn to be a starter. David won 20 ball games. He's got to be healthy if they're really going to trade away pitchers, not to mention the uncertainty about Bob Ojeda. Threw very well the other day. I was very impressed. Came in here at Dodger Stadium and game two didn't look like he was very sharp, but threw the ball very well in New York. One and two. And then glorious mark being approached by Shelby. Well, at least he's got good company. He shares a mark with Strawberry. Things could be worse. Of course, you can help a ball club even if you strike out, and you have to go back to the, the valiant yes, effort in game one, right. and then the great catch he made in the game that Hershiser came in to end the ball game, not to mention the one in game four also that ended the ball game, in the seven to four lead. So a lot of people give him a lot of credit. We've talked about maybe not great agility and with Gibson and left and Marshall and right, but Shelby's an outstanding center fielder that can also throw very well. Mike Sosha now with one out of the bases empty. And it's highly doubtful if the Dodgers win that Sosha would be the MVP in the series because you'd have to look at Hershiser, you'd have to look at Gibson, you'd have to look at Tim Belcher. Don't forget about him with the two victories. But it was Mike Sosha's home run that tilted the series in the ninth inning of game four. I mean, it, you go back and that's the best home record in the National League, 56 wins. If they win that ball game, and Gooden had only thrown 10 home runs all year to that point. They have a chance to finish them off on Monday back at home. And what he meant is they come back here. So if Hershiser is the Bulldog, Socia is the St. Bernard. <laughs> <laughs> One and two. It was very good. I'm surprised Tommy didn't think of that. I mean, <laughs> he'll steal it. Yes, I know. <laughs> You know, it's interesting. We saw a brief glimpse of Oral. He said when he was 19 and three back in 1985, he said one of the reasons he didn't pitch that well the next year was he did a lot of off-season speaking. Now you got to figure he's going to be in great demand this year. Talk about motivation. Looped into shallow center, but Backman goes out and makes the play on the grass. So two down now in the seventh inning. And that'll bring up Jeff Hamilton. Sosha with eight hits in the series. Third baseman, Jeff Hamilton. So Mike got two down. 
And Hamilton one for three tonight. And really by Sosha's standards he had an off season so it's obviously very important not only for the Dodgers but for him to have a great postseason. Yeah you had an off season with the bat but that's one consolation you can always get as a catcher is that you're an appendix to the pitching staff and when they do well you get consolation out of that also. Well that's pretty much the story of Gary Carter this season uh -huh. offensively not a, not a good year in fact uh, one of his poorer seasons but some satisfaction a lot of satisfaction under the way the Mets performed on the mound and yet everybody talked about the throwing that the Mets allowed the most stolen bases next to Houston in the major leagues. But a lot of that the fault of the pitching staff. Yeah, I think Carter will you know, and again you can only guess but it's probably his healthiest year he's had in three or four years but he will go home he'll make some adjustments and uh, I think he can still hit I just it seems to me he's been in about a three month bunk at home plate trying to pull when he should be trying to hit the ball the other way and uh, again I you know I talked to him he said this is what it's all about and it's got to be very disappointing that they're trailing here in the seventh game of the, the National League Championship Series. No balls, two strikes the count. Six runs, ten hits, and no errors for LA. No runs, five hits, and two errors for New York. Well, it's been said that the pitcher's best friend's a double play ball, but it's really the catcher. Because he's the guy you can count on to come out and say the right things. One and two the count. To McReynolds in left. And Aguilera has a one two three inning. On to the eighth. It remains six nothing Dodgers in game seven. Oral Hershiser tying a championship series record. Roger Clemens, Boston against California in 86, worked 22 and two thirds innings. And if Oral can get one more out, he'll own the record by himself. Eighth inning, he's working on a shutout at 6 0, and Mackie Sasser to lead off for New York. 0 and 1. Sasser, Dykstra, and Backman. Shelby moving over. Five outs to go. One out in the eighth inning. Strawberry in the Mets dugout. Darrell, a good series overall. But as we mentioned before, relatively quiet. The booming home run the other night and eight other hits. But in terms of propitious hits, you take a look at somebody like Gibson and he hit him at very opportune times. Well that's what's so impressive about the Dodgers staff. They gave Strawberry opportunity to get hits but parts of the plate keep away from his power. Fernandez about the few mistakes that he had to hit. And you were throwing fastballs away and you, you know, he can't hit the ball out in the field but they've kept the ball down as you look at Howard Johnson. Only one hit in the series. In this series. It's been the kind of night the crowd with that big early lead and they've settled back and they've relished every moment. And they've even had time for a long wave. <laughs> What'd you call it Tim. Yeah well <laughs> I'm not much on the wave but tonight I think it takes on a new significance. I think tonight it's a tidal wave. <laughs> yes, it's spelled differently <laughs> T I T L E. And Dykstra gets hit by the pitch. And the Dodgers, I think, are going to contend. He really yeah. didn't attempt to get out of the way of it. None whatsoever. Harry Wendelstedt's already made that call in this ballpark, however. 20 years ago, to keep Don Drysdale's streak alive, he said Dick Dietz did not really try to get out of the way of a pitch with the bases loaded. They made him come up again. Drysdale got out of the inning, and the streak went on. Well, he did move his back foot. It's just the wrong one. And again, Lenny is a tough little guy, and he. I'll take one look. He follows it right down to his toe. Second time in the series that Lenny's been hit by a pitch. So Dykstra doing anything to get on as Backman comes to the plate and takes outside ball one. One and oh. 
Stubbs playing behind Dykstra now. And it's 2 and 0. Oh. And the Dodger bullpen busy again. Carter done for the night. And in the Dodger bullpen, Tudor, the lefty up again, and Jay Howell, the right hander. And of course, Howell hasn't pitched since the Pintar episode. I tell you, it's a superhuman effort, obviously required on the part of the Mets. But if they load him up or something like that and you change pitchers, you don't know what might happen. Mm -hmm. And Hershiser behind on the count, 3 and 0. Oh. Not a happy night for Frank Cashin, the Mets GM. And you're also getting into the middle of the lineup. Taking all the way, obviously, and it's three and one. Well, he ought to be taken all the way till three two. The one and oh, it didn't appear that he was taking. Mets haven't had two men on in the same inning since the first. And now Backman draws the walk. So runners at first and second with one out in the eighth inning. The Dodgers still need five outs. Lasorda confers with Paranowski, and here comes Keith Hernandez. And Tommy pretty much saying to Ron, what do you think? Ron says, what do you think, Skip? Well, I can imagine the answer when he says, hurt to, to Oro, how do you feel? As if he's going to tell him I'm a little tired. I think some pitchers will do that. That's what you want, honesty, but it, he might have been tired going into this ball game. If he comes out of the game, it'll be about a 6-3 on the Richter scale. You read his lips, I'm fine. The Mets hoping a bloop and a blast will put him back in this thing. Well, it will. Definitely yep. will. Mm -hmm. But you know what happened to back when he tried to make good pitches? Because as we talked about, he wants to shut up. Didn't make them, and then he lost them. I don't know what Hernandez is going to do here, but I would think he'd get a pretty good pitch to swing out early in the count. I mean, he's going to try to run the ball away from him. But Hernandez usually takes that ball to left field. I would think if Hernandez gets a hit, Tudor will be in to pitch to Strawberry. And Keith fouls it away, 0 and 1. Mets buried in a mine shaft with just a thin sliver of air. Owen won the count. Owen two. This is the pitch that struck Hernandez out last time. I don't know. I'd look like a split finger fastball. He hadn't thrown that all series. That's what a six run lead will do. And a breaking pitch is hammered foul. That's a pitch he threw a lot last year. Great play by the bat boy down the right field line. If Mets had had him playing on the infield back in the second, the game would be a lot closer. <laughs> No balls, two strikes. Hernandez trying to breathe new life back into the body. It's six nothing Dodgers, but the Mets have runners at first and second. One out at the top of the eighth inning. No balls, two strikes to count. He's trying, isn't he? Went with a four seamer. He's been throwing sinkers all night. Went for the strikeout. Settles for the one at first base as Hershiser covers. 
Runners move up. Two down. And Strawberry coming up. The Darrell Serenade. Right here. thoughts and interesting thing in the 59 scoreless inning scheme we had a stat where he had 32 runners in scoring position not one scored. Talk about getting outs at the right time. Two men in scoring position here with two down. Two strikes. just warming up for what they hope is the encore in the night. Two on, two out, two and two the count on Strawberry. Six nothing Dodgers. Some of the crowd chanting beat New York, beat New York. In the meeting, Timmy, what we talked about earlier, he may not know exactly what Ohoro wants to do because normally you just throw him a fastball away and hope, you know, make him hit the ball to left field. But Hershiser's thinking shutout, strikeout. Any out. Yes. Powell. Good. Seven and a half, it remains six to nothing, Dodgers. Al Michaels, Jim Palmer, Tim McCarver, game seven. The Dodgers got a run in the first, five in the second. Oral Hershiser has shut New York out through eight. The Dodgers come up in the bottom of the eighth. They're three outs away from the World Series, three outs away from their first pennant since 1981. 
And in the bottom of the eighth inning, Alfredo Griffin to lead things off. And then Hershiser and Sachs, the eight, nine, and one hitters, with Rick Aguilera on the mound for the Mets. Disturbance down the line and left, causing a momentary stoppage. And that is, of course, the Dodger clubhouse in anticipation of a major celebration. 0 and 1. That uh, preparation for the World Series, if it does happen for the Dodgers, will probably be in late afternoon tomorrow. That Tommy was talking about in the pregame show. I'll tell you, both in uh, Jim, you and I have both been on both ends of the spectrum. And I'll tell you, it's just out of sync. Your elation is to the point of giddiness, and your despair is lower than low. Backman to Hernandez, and there's one away. And you just can't help but think of what might have been. And, uh, so many of those situations in this series. Hershiser. That's what you call an oral salute. Get another one as he grounds after short. Two down. Well, that oral salute has come after the performance of oral surgery on the Mets tonight. <laughs> Second base. I read a story where they said, I don't know, I don't know if it's just standard fare that everybody in the Dodgers gets a picture from Frank Sinatra. But he got one from Frank and he spelled it O R A L. <laughs> now, obviously, that was early in his career. It must have been his rookie year. <laughs> so, if you're listening, Frank, get his name right. Send him another one. Frank always did it his way anyway. Right. Sachs fouls it off 0 and 1. And what a way. Even if he never won a spelling bee. He's Two out, bottom of the eighth. He's, he's more interested in phrases. Another way he phrased the song. Aguilera takes care of Sachs. And now the end is near. Very near. My dear. In decisive games in the championship series, it used to be a best of five. Oakland Baltimore 73 catfish hunter blank the Orioles last year best of seven National League Danny Cox of St. Louis blank San Francisco and now Oral Hershiser against the New York Mets who are three outs away from flunking this oral test as they trail six to nothing McReynolds Jeffries and then a pinch hitter for Aguilera. Moved third baseman Jeff Hamilton in. I don't think he's aware that it's 0 for 21, but he knows he probably doesn't hit him well. He knows he may bunt, so you take the bunt away from him. To left center field and deep and all the way back and making the catch on the run is Gonzalez. Jose Gonzalez to the gap. Very nice play by Gonzalez. You see how cautious he goes after. I bet he's never caught a ball like that in his life. Look at his right hand. How cautiously he's cradling the ball to make sure. One out.
Jeffries at the plate. On deck to bat for Aguilera is Lee Mazzilli. Two and zero. Oh. David Cohn sent the Mets to a seventh game, but Oral Hershiser is trying to send them home for the winter. Three and zero. Oh. Yeah, you know what's going through David Cohn's mind? Not the not the game and the great game he pitched yesterday, but the second game. Because you sit on the bench and you think, what if I had just done this or this hadn't happened? Seems when you're the losing team or about to lose, you reflect on all the negative things, not the good things that have happened either during the season or during the playoff. Just the way it is. Yeah, they lose Jay Howell, and it's actually a boost. Three and two on the left, Tim Belcher, and don't forget about him. Two victories. To Griffin. One out to go. Mazzilli to the plate. Back on the bench to savor the moment. Isn't that what he said the season's all about? Getting to the World Series? His second in five years. out onto the field in the middle of all of this. So time called for the moment. A strike to go. And the crescendo will build again in a moment. Two out. 0 and 2 on Mazzilli. Six nothing Dodgers. Two pitch. So the Mets still alive. Barely. Elster do up. Howard Johnson will come up to bat for him. With two out of the ninth inning, Howard Johnson coming to the plate. Howard Johnson. 
for Johnson. A very tough series. And in fact it earned him a seat on the bench the last two nights as Elster went in there to play shortstop. And now Howard comes up to bat for Elster with two out of the ninth inning. They just pitched him real tough. Strawberry got his hits. They bunch of curveballs. He got one hit, a broken bat single. Time called. Hershiser are just noticing now the stoppage for the old pistol Zelly. Something you talked about in the opening. You get so pumped up, you got to bring yourself down. Yep. Two strikes, only one more, and you go to the World Series and you hit somebody. Not what you wanted to do. Mazzilli going and nobody is covering so they just let Mazzilli go down to second base. He wasn't being held on and he figures why not. So Mazzilli with an uncontested steal and the count no balls and one strike on Howard Johnson. You got to do it because you take away the force play. And Howard hits the ball in the hole with good speed is going to beat it out. So no gamble involved at all. The 0 1 pitch. And again, a strike away. 0 1 2. Inside and emotionally, you know, you hear the crowd, you call a guy out. Yeah. yeah. I know Oral Hershiser wants that pitch, but Howard Johnson, he still wants to get on. If the other team doesn't win until you make the 27th out, and they have more runs. The 2 2 pitch. 3 and 2. Mackey Sasser out on deck. Hershiser will work for a wind up, not even thinking about Mazzilli at second. That last strike is proving elusive. But it's proved elusive in this series.
the Dodgers have gone from.